Baguio, stunning beaches, fine sand, bikinis, coconut trees, sunset cocktails by the ocean. Nope, there's none of that here. Okay, so if none of these lovely things are in Baguio, why do I call this place home? I've been in the Philippines on and off for around 20 years, and I could live literally anywhere else in the Philippines. So, why Baguio? In this video, I'll explain why I love Baguio and therefore why you might love it too. But let's be realistic, there's downsides too, so hang around until the end of the video and I'll let you know the minuses of living in Baguio. I'll also tell you some costings along the way. Okay, let's jump straight in with my number one favorite thing about Baguio. But before anything else, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know about any new videos. It's all about the weather. The Philippines has two seasons, hot and dry, hot and wet, basically hot, but not here in Baguio. It's always deliciously cool with temperatures not exceeding 26 degrees, that's about 78 Fahrenheit, and it can drop to 10 degrees, 50 Fahrenheit, from December to March. Why? Because Baguio is in the mountains, 1,400 meters, that's about 4,600 feet above sea level, around five hours bus ride north of the capital. While places like Manila are often sweltering in the sticky high 30s or 40s, it's fresh mountain air in Baguio all year round. As an added bonus, humidity is lower than the rest of the Philippines. I always find the air sticky anywhere else, with humidity often being about 90%, but Baguio only 60 to 70%. Oh, fresh clean forest air. And speaking of forests, Baguio has greenery galore. Even looking out over my balcony here, you can see trees, pine trees. There are parks and forests everywhere. If you love hiking, there are a ton of well-maintained trails, including Yellow Trail, Eco Trail, Forest Bathing Trail, Red Trail, Blue Trail, and many others further out of town. It's not a pure concrete city. There's trees even in the center of town. That's great, and it's important we maintain some level of nature within our urban environments. Baguio undoubtedly has the best coffee in the Philippines. That's because it's in these very mountains you'll find vast coffee fields of Arabica beans. The coffee beans are grown here, so you're drinking coffee which is as fresh as it gets. Baguio has a vibrant coffee shop culture which is pretty trendy. Some have amazing views across the valley, reading nooks, or set in charming colonial homes. Baguio is kind of grungy, trendy, and the restaurants reflect that vibe. There's a large diversity of cuisine from biryani to British, from Chinese to Chiang Mai. It's a foodie heaven due to the cooler climate, which allow many of the country's fantastic and diverse produce thrive. And of course, I have to mention the delicious strawberries grow not far from Baguio. There are field upon field of mouth-watering strawberries, and you can either pick your own or head on down to the Baguio market. You can even buy strawberry to hop, which is something I've never seen anywhere else in the country. Bills, all oh, those pesky bills, but fear not because your electricity bill in Baguio will be vastly lower than anywhere else in the Philippines. And you've probably guessed the reason already. Yep, no air conditioning required. The biggest electricity guzzler in any household is aircon, but here allow the fresh cool air to slowly permeate through your home. Expect a monthly electricity bill in Baguio to be a mere one and a half thousand to three thousand pesos. For water, around 550 to 1,500 pesos a month. Having said that, prices are due to increase because of a water shortage. It's bizarre because Baguio has amongst the heaviest rainfall in the Philippines, yet has a water shortage. Even in this modern condo block I'm in, we no longer receive mains water and instead have to rely on trucks of water delivering every 15 minutes just to keep the tanks topped up for the building. And finally, internet. Expect to pay about one and a half thousand to three thousand pesos a month, depending on which plan you go with. And by the way, our good friend Starlink is now available in Baguio. There's always something epic going on in Baguio. It's actually surprising how much happens here. The biggest festival is called, ooh, I feel a word of the day coming on, Panag Benga. Come on, mispronounce it like I do. Panag Benga, which means season of bloom, which is a magical month-long flower festival. There's also another 
month-long strawberry festival after that. And many others strew throughout the year. Every Sunday, the high street is closed and you can see cosplay. And bye. We're heading into slightly strange territory now, but having spent a couple of decades in and out of the Philippines, street dogs are not just a nuisance, but downright terrifying if you've ever been attacked. What dog is this? In Naga City, I would regularly have to change my walking route because dangerous street dogs were blocking a road. But in Baguio, I've never yet seen a street dog. I honestly don't know how Baguio has achieved this, and to be honest, perhaps I don't want to know, but it makes for a stress-free walk around the area, not having to constantly monitor for dangerous street dogs. And as an extra bonus, it's quiet at night. No barking, just crickets. Speaking of walking around Baguio City, high-end western pavements. I prefer to walk everywhere, so this one's important to me. Again, you don't get this level of quality pavement in other places in the Philippines. Mostly it's walking along dusty roads in amongst the traffic or flooded mud tracks or dodging live electricity cables dangling in front of you. The quality of paving in Baguio is exceptional, and it's not just the main roads. Even the small side streets often have good pavements. And chances are the pavements are so good because of the Americans. Americans developed Baguio in the early 1900s to be their home away from home. The weather was kind of similar to some parts of the US, so they patterned Baguio's design after Washington DC. There's plenty of fine places in Baguio that were designed by the Americans from Burnham Park to Wright Park to Camp John Hay, a former US military base. There's a vibrant American community here too, with plenty of retirees and teachers. There are expat groups you can join if you want to feel at home, such as the Baguio Beer Bus and the Baguio Thursday Lunch Group, amongst many others. Now, not everything in Baguio is rainbow and unicorns, so here's some things I've noticed which are not so awesome. Baguio is expensive, far more expensive than even tourist central Boracay. Restaurants, groceries, medicine, rent, which I'll come back to in a moment, are insanely high. To be fair, groceries and medicines are pricey throughout all the Philippines compared to somewhere like the UK. Expect to pay for groceries 10,000 to 20,000 pesos a month. Of course, if you've got all the time in the world, you can head down to the city market and haggle for some fresh veggies and fruits cheaper, but anything else is pretty extortionate. I know this is a funny way of measuring price, but a tahok in Naga City costs 10 pesos, but in Baguio, 50 pesos. We're talking a five times price difference. This leads me on to rent. And again, Baguio is super expensive. My rent costs less in Boracay, minutes away from beautiful White Beach. And yes, you can watch other YouTubers claim to live for a handful of dollars, but I'll tell you from personal experience, it's not true. And bad for your health. I tried to move into a place recently which cost just 13 US dollars a night, but before I even walked in, I was hit by the stench of human feces. As I peered inside, I was met with a dank, moldy, depressing room. No thanks. So I took the loss on that one. But immediately to move into a place that cost 18 US dollars a night, which turned into a cockroach nightmare. It was moldy and vile beyond words. In fact, illegal in most countries. Really, you need to fork out quite a bit to afford a semi-decent rental. This apartment, for example, is a Western quality, fully furnished, one bedroom, walking distance to town. Places similar to this will set you back 40,000 to 50,000 pesos per month. A studio, perhaps 20,000 to 30,000 a month. Again, you can go cheaper, but just, just don't. If you've heard one thing about Baguio, it's probably the traffic and overcrowding. That is sadly true. And I know some people will argue traffic is crazy in all the Philippine cities, yet Baguio managed to raise the bar on this one. It's like, hey, I'll match your traffic jam and raise you 50%. If that's how you play traffic jam poker? The traffic, especially on the weekends, is standstill and the vehicles spew out smoke from their exhaust not so much breathe Baguio now, eh? The high street too is chock-a-block, and if you're a fast walker like me, you'll often end up frustrated, stuck behind walls of feet-dragging tortoises. Admittedly, it does quieten down Monday to Friday when the one million tourists bugger off back to Manila. Bye! Personally, I try not to go into town on the weekend and lock myself away in a cocoon of calm. 
Sadly, natural disasters have devastated Baguio in the past, most notably the 1990 Luzon earthquake, which was a whopping 7.8 magnitude, 125 kilometer long rupture in the ground. That killed over 1,600 people. Buildings, hotels, factories, and private homes were of course obliterated. And there have been plenty of other larger earthquakes, even as recently as 2022, when a 7.1 magnitude hit Baguio, unfortunately killing several people. But hey ho, it's all fun and games, and you've just got to hope it's not your time yet. Having said all that, there are so many positives about Baguio, such as the efficient mayor, Benjamin Magalong, who is positively involved with everything in the city. People who live in Baguio are super friendly. Shop workers, security guards, restaurant cafe staff are also happy and positive. Baguio's taxi drivers are literally the most honest in the Philippines and always start their meters without having to ask and always give you your change. There's a beautiful cathedral, many things to see, and a new domestic airport currently only flying to Cebu but expected to expand to Manila and other parts of the country. I love living in Baguio and I hope you've heard enough of the positives in this city to be at least intrigued. If you haven't been to the Philippines before, of course, go see the stunning bikinis, sunset sand, cocktail trees, and fine coconuts. But once you've done that, check out Baguio, especially if you're looking to stay long-term or retire in the Philippines. I hope you enjoyed this video. Are there any thoughts you'd like to share about Baguio? Pro or con, I don't mind, just let me know in the comments. And we need your support. To support us, all you have to do is tickle those subscribe and notify buttons. Go on, you can do it. See you next time. Ciao.